of the most exciting new features in ROXIM 11 is Auto Engine Update. This will automatically keep you updated with any new rocket engines that become available. By default, when ROXIM is started, it will search the internet for new motor files and automatically download them to your computer. To see the new motors, go to the File menu and select Reload Engine Data. The motors that will be shown in your selection screen are those listed in the right hand column. There will probably be motors that you don't want displayed when you are loading motors to run a simulation. So you can move those motors from the right hand side to the left side. They will still remain in your database, they'll just not be shown to you when you are picking motors. With this powerful new feature, you'll always be up to date with the newest rocket motors as they become available. One of the premier features in ROXIM 11 is the ability to airfoil fins. Here I have a two-stage rocket and I'm going to open up the booster fin and I'll zoom in a little bit and you'll notice that currently right now we have the fin set to a square cross-section. If we choose rounded, you'll see that the edges of the fin, the leading and the trailing edges, are now rounded. And if we choose airfoil, you'll see that now it changed to an airfoil shape. Um, within this, you can also adjust the maximum thickness of the airfoil as a percentage of the length of the cord. So right now it's set to about 25% of the cord, so the maximum thickness occurs 25% of the way along the cord here. And you can adjust this just by grabbing the slider bar and moving it. You can see that now it's thicker towards the back. Um, you can also change this to a constant thickness. Um, you can see it um, doing this mostly um, when the uh, tip edge is smaller. So let me change that. I'll make that point uh, one inch. So you can see now the tip edge is very skinny compared to the root edge. Uh, but if I choose constant thickness, you'll see that now the thickness of that cord is the same all the way up the fin. And this is typically how most people sand fins. Although, um, if you want the lowest drag, you want to use a non-constant thickness. Also notice that um, as you uh, change the airfoil, the mass of the fin is reduced because you're reducing the uh, the amount of material here. So let me, so look right now it's 3.5 uh, grams for the set or 1.16 grams for each individual fin. And if I change it back to a square, you'll see that the mass increased. Um, another thing about this fin is this is a through the wall fin and let me click OK here. And I'll show you that the <clears throat> The, the tab doesn't airfoil if it's not the same length as the body of the, of the length of the fin. So if I go to this tube right here and I'll make it translucent so we can see through it. Um, that's under color and we change the opacity and I'll zoom in and so now you can see it make this a little bit bigger for you. So you can see that it does have a through the wall fin tab and I'll click OK there and now we'll go and airfoil the fin again. Oops, not wrong fin. Okay, and if we airfoil it, you'll see that the tab is not airfoiled. Um, so that 
is done because if you cut a slot in your tube, normally that slot is a rectangular shape, and this will allow your fin to easily slide through that slot without being floppy in there. Now if the, uh, the fin slot or the, uh, um, the tab length, if I go to the tab and if I say there's zero tab offset and I make it the entire length of the fin, oops, I extended it too far. I can't remember how length long this is. So it's three inches long. So if I make this three inches, you'll see that now the tab is airfoiled like the fin is airfoiled. And the reason for that is because you'll probably sand it all together if it has the same cord as the length of that um, slot. Um, the last thing you can do here is export out um, a 3D file that you can print on your printer. So just go down here to the export template and you have to do that if you want just an, an individual fin, you have to do this from the fin. So just um, I'm going to save it to the desktop and I'm going to call it number two because I've done one already and then um, under the format choose STL and hit save and it's going to ask you what your resolution is and typically you'll say is very high resolution and then export and it tells you that the fin was exported to the 3D format which is STL um, and at that point you can open it up and bring it into your um, 3D slicer and here is what that would look like once you bring it into the slicer um, you can see that this one has a tab on it and the tab has created a gap so on this one I would have to create supports on it um, so here I'm just setting the uh, density of the supports and then I'll generate it and in my slicer it generates those supports quickly um, so at this point it's ready to 3D print and you can print a set of them and then you can glue them onto your rocket. Now this is a printed fin and I made it a little bit thicker just so that you could see the airfoil but you can see how beautiful this looks and what you can do with it using Roxim 11. With dual deployment rockets, you often need to know how much black powder you need for your ejection charge. In this rocket, I have to pressurize this tube up here and this tube back here. The new feature in Roxim version 11 allows us to do this easily. So go to the rocket menu and select ejection charge calculator. This will bring up a screen showing the side view of the rocket. You will notice there are tool help tips here. Um, so first you need to select a body tube that needs to be pressurized. So I'm going to select this forward tube. And then you can just click and drag the ends to the point in the rocket that needs to be pressurized. So I need to pressurize from the base of the nose cone to the front of the tube coupler. Um, and then you select your desired internal pressure. Um, and then it automatically calculates how much black powder is required. And then over here is some information about the volume that you are pressurizing. So it's that simple. So if you want to pressurize this tube, select that tube, and then just drag the ends of the tube to where you're going to pressurize. So here I want to go to the bulkhead here and to the bottom of the coupler right there. And you see my length is 25 inches, the diameter is 3.9, and it tells me how much black powder I'll need. And if I change the internal pressure, you can see the black powder has increased. And you can also add shear pins. So if I add three shear pins with number two nylon screws, again you see that the black powder required has increased to be able to shear those pins in that area.
A new feature in Roxim version 11 is the ability to make quick measurements. And this is done using the measure tool. So what you can do is just click on that and then you select any two points on the rocket that you wish to measure. For example, say I need to know how big the payload bay is here on this rocket between the back of the nose cone shoulder and the front of the transition shoulder. So you just click any two points and it will give you a quick measurement. And then, of course, in Roxim, you can change your units to what you desire. A feature that many users have requested is a paper wrap to be printed out that will allow you to place the fins on the rocket correctly. To do this, go to the Print menu, so you can either go File Print or click on the print button and you will see this new placement guide wrap option. To create your wrap, select the placement guide wrap checkbox and then select which items you wish to have drawn on your wrap. When you print it out, you'll get a sheet of paper that looks like this with all your fins and your launch lugs labeled on the wrap. Simply cut it out and wrap it around your rocket. This should make placement of your fins much easier using Roxm version 11. Over the last several years, many users have asked us to allow this image down here to be printed out full size. This is now available in Roxm 11. But instead of using the print menu, you need to go to the export menu. So go to File, Export, and then 2D Model 100% Scale. And this will export out the drawing as an SVG format. So to open it, you will need a graphics program that allows you to view SVG drawings, which are vector drawings. Um, and then from there, you will see that this is a full-size drawing. Uh, for example, this rocket right here was 47.25 inches long. And so I made a line that's exactly 47.25 inches. And I can use that as a guide to just double check to make sure that this rocket is being drawn 100% full scale. Sometimes the mass of your rocket may not be what you think it should be. And then you need to find out which component is the one that is causing the problems. Instead of opening all the components one at a time, there's a new feature in Roxim 11 where you can see the mass of each item. Go to the System Preferences for Roxim, and under the Units tab, there is a checkbox that says Show Masses in Component Tree. Click on that and select OK. You will now see the individual masses of each of the parts. If there are items such as a, a pod, you can hover over it and it will show you the mass of all the parts in that pod. This makes it fast to find out which parts might be causing a problem with the mass of your rocket. When selecting a rocket motor in Roxm, you will notice that there are hundreds of rocket motors to choose from. If you know specifically which one you want and you're having a difficult time finding it in the engine list, there's this new search engine code feature and you can just type in an engine and hit the tab and it will find those engines with that engine code. That makes it easier to select your motor. Because many rocket kits allow you to put an engine adapter in to use smaller rocket engines, it makes sense to figure out in Roxim what size engine are listed here. There is a new feature 
that will show you the engine diameter. To see it, go to this header column here at the top and right click and choose Organize Columns. Then from the list, select Engine Diameters and click OK. You will see a new engine diameter column listed here. If you want to move it around, just click and drag it into the column position that you want it to go. And to adjust the size of the columns, just grab the column header and move them around. If you want to sort, just click on the column header and it will resort the list from smallest to largest. 